even men at the top of their game find themselves wanting more from life. Whether it's more meaning, unshakable confidence, a bigger impact, more money, deeper love, a hotter sex life, or a powerful legacy. Find out how good your life can be on this episode of Man Alive. Also, as I've supported men in their love and work lives for 15 years now, many men ask for the right words to say to be more successful, attractive, and desirable. But I found it's not so simple as giving scripts or lines because every man is different. So giving words or scripts would be like giving a tall, thin man a shorter, wider man's pants or vice versa. The words have to make sense for you and your personality, and there's so much happening beneath the surface that people are responding to. If you're interested in how to become a better lover and leader in your own unique way, go to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz, or you can text ALIVE to 44144. It only takes a couple minutes and you'll start to get an idea of how you can be both more respected and desired. After you fill it out, we can schedule a time to review your quiz and talk about your specific challenges and desires. So again, go to either shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz or text ALIVE to 44144. That's A-L-I-V-E to 44144. Enjoy this episode of Man Alive. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Man Alive. I'm excited today to talk about men's health and vitality and adventure with Anthony Treas. Anthony, welcome. Hey, Shana. It's exciting to be here with you. Thank you for this opportunity. Yeah, I'm excited to have you here because you're living a pretty incredible life, adventurous and um, out of the box. And I really want to give men a sense of what's possible and how you can you know, redefine yourself after struggles or after living a life that's more conventional um, and also not paint this rosy rainbow picture, right? That it happens immediately and mm -hmm you know, and that you did this right away. So I'm excited to get into what you're doing now and the struggles, you know, and what you faced along the way. Yes. Um, and I want to give you a, a quick intro before we dive in. Okay. So Anthony is an Iraq war veteran and is on a mission to radically change men's mental health. His mission in Iraq was to provide personal security for U.S. generals and government officials and now his mission is to inspire men to reclaim their health, their sense of adventure and purpose. Upon his return home, Anthony struggled with PTSD, anxiety and depression and desperately wanted to improve his condition and set out to rebuild his own health and mental well-being. And with seven years of experience, research, study and education, he developed the STRONG method, a proven step-by-step -step process his clients use to eliminate their anxiety and to regain control over their health and mental well-being to become strong men. So first of all, I just want to say kudos to you and thank you for doing your own work and then also for then committing to helping other men do the same. You know, I, I'm a strong believer in um, there's just too many men out there suffering alone. So thank you for, for being a support and a guide. Mm, yes, thank you. And thank you for what you do as well. And it's great to be getting a more positive, um, uplifting message for men. I love the word you used in uh, the intro here, redefining. And that's such an awesome word because we can redefine our life at any time. Yeah. And I love that word. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So give us a picture of now, and then we'll get into the nitty gritty of what it took and what you went through. But, mm -hmm. you know, right now you are in Colombia and you don't have a, um, like a constant home or place that you stay. So, so give a sense of the adventure that you're living in this moment. Yeah, right now I'm in Bogota, Colombia, and I am living my dreams. I'm, I've always wanted to uh, travel the world. I've been to 13 countries um, as of today. And right now I'm, I run my business as I'm traveling the world. And right now I'm in Bogota. I'm actually going to be here for a week. Then I'm heading out to Cartagena for a week. Then I'm heading to Medellin. And then I'm actually taking a, a sidebar trip to Venice, Italy, and, you know, this is something that um, has been a dream of mine. And like you mentioned, we could go back to the nitty gritty because this 
didn't just happen for me overnight. How I am right now today um, is not who I was eight years ago. And, and so I'm just uh, living my dream of, of this adventurous lifestyle. And it's not about being, a, um, you know, kind of this low budget traveler. I'm, I am extravagant. I love to um, do great and exciting things and, advent and be adventurous and living out that adventurous side in me. Amazing. Okay, right. So you're not living the, like the 20 year old backpacker dream. You're living the 40 something year old. <laughs> I want to have adventures and yes. do this yeah. well. Yeah, no, don't get me wrong. I have stayed in hostels before. I have stayed in dormitories and those things are, are great, but yes. I uh, definitely have done that before and, and wouldn't mind if I have to stay a day or two doing something like that, but it gets me to uh, ed, um, meet amazing people along the way yep. and it's just been great. So Good. Okay, good. So you're traveling and when I asked you before how long you were going to travel, you said forever. <laughs> there's no, unless, until something else happens. Right? Yeah, you know, I ha there's no return date. There is no return date. My family back home in California, my, my, like my parents, I, I'm not married, have any kids or anything. All of them are, are back in the States and they know this is me. I have no return date. There's no, um, I'm not going back to the States until, <laughs> until I, I need to or until um, an event happens and stuff. And so, wow. so yeah. It's exciting, really exciting. And um, yeah, I'm like, okay, there's a part of me that wishes I was out there. <laughs> and we talked about this before we started too, yeah. right? How to, how to take my son. I think there are some amazing journeys. And so maybe a little later we'll talk to you about men who do have kids and who are, you know, bound in certain ways and yeah. how they can start having some of this, even if it's not, I'm going out there forever, but I'm going to go out there for a month or for the summer mm -hmm. or Absolutely. wherever that may be. So, okay. So tell us a little bit about your history and, you know, how you got to this place. Cause there's been a lot of, of grit, I would say along the way. Yeah, so I was in the Oregon Army National Guard in, in 2009, and we got, called, we got uh, called up for deployment, which started in 2009, and I came back, uh, my job actually, my job in Iraq was to provide personal security for generals, government officials, and we even provided personal security for the Vice President of the United States, Joe wow. Biden at the time. Wow. And so it was a zero air, high intensity mission, we it was intense where we'd have to you know the people that we were providing security from the enemy would have wanted nothing more than to um, get a hold of them and uh, and so our mission was very secretive and their location was secretive and mm -hmm. so we had to be able to provide this security when they were in in baghdad iraq and, and wow. in the vicinity of baghdad so there was a lot of um intensity to it and you know, there you feel normal, you feel okay, you're, you're doing your job, it's high intensity, and it's, it's everyday uh, situations, our, our base is getting mortared, I'm jumping into uh, bunkers, and, and all these several, several different things, and you're just trying to survive. Wow. And, and then you get to a point where, uh, hey, you're, you know, it's time for us to go back home, and you're excited, and then you get back home, and there's that reintegration period. The unfortunate thing for me and that happened to me is two months before coming back home, I then uh, at the time I received a uh, modern day um, uh, a modern day Dear John letter through email uh, from my then wife telling me she wanted a divorce upon my oh return. Oh my home. god! So my wow. return so home. You're over there, and did you even know that you were coming back at that time, or it's? Yes, it was approximately two months uh, before coming back home. And the, the interesting thing is the enemy would normally uh, try to um, send mortars over in our base during nighttime when they, we even, we had, we owned the night because of the equipment that we had, but they would still try and attempt and do their uh, best to try to um, do what they can to us. Wow. And so they would do that at night. Well, while we were preparing to return home, still in Iraq, back, uh, still in Baghdad, Iraq, the mortar went off and um, right above my head. Now, not right above my head, but, you know, like up in the air, but above my, my head. And we have, there was a system that would try to, that would attempt to shoot out these mortars. And oftentimes they were successful, 
uh, other times not. And it was shot right above my head and it just starts sprinkling, literally sprinkling these metal fragments oh all God. over me. Wow. And one, one hits my shoulder and it goes down to the floor and I, I look at it. I go down, I bend down and I pick it up <sighs> and, I, and I look at this metal shrapnel, this metal, this piece of metal. And it was just kind of like this reminder to me that you're not home yet. Wow. You're, you're not safe. And I was upset because of this information, you know, this, this email I received from yeah. my life. And, and I'm like, I, and I, I wish I would have kept this thing to be honest with you because, but I ended up chucking it. I ended up throwing it and I was so mad and frustrated because it was right. It was like, Anthony, do not let your guard down. You are not home yet. Mm -hmm. You know, you still have a, you still have a job to do. Keep, keep, uh, stay in the fight, stay in the fight. Wow. And so coming back home, I returned to uh, an empty house <laughs> And then shortly after I began to um, wake up in the middle of the night, I wouldn't know where I was at. Mm. I'd wake up just sweating. I'd um, just started, all these things started happening. I'd, I'd drive under an underpass and my heart would just start racing without even me thinking about it. Yeah. And it was because in Iraq, we would, ha we would drive under overpasses and we'd have to do these maneuvers in order to um, prevent from being um, them lobbying things right. over into our vehicles. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, then if I saw there was an incident where I, I went to a, a store to go buy some clothes and I come out and the parking lot was fairly empty, but right in the middle of the parking stall next to my truck mm -hmm. was this black garbage bag. Mm. And, and it, it took me right back to Iraq and, I then, I, I, I like went into this other mode where I duck down, I'm looking all around, I'm starting to look on rooftops, I'm mm -hmm. trying to look at all these everywhere behind vehicles, and I, my heart's just racing, and I'm thinking many things. First off, one of them, I'm like, how, why is there this black garbage bag right next to my truck? It's so odd to even for that to be there. It's almost somewhat in the, not necessarily in the middle of the day, but like in the middle of the afternoon. And I get in, I go into like high alert and I'm just there and I'm looking around and there's nobody around. It was just, it was a weird situation. And all of a sudden I, I came to, and I, I was like, I was pissed. I was mad. And I said, I used some language. And I said, you know, if this, something's going to happen, something's going to happen. I got into my truck. Mm -hmm. I turned it on and I just sped out of there. I was so mad because I, I was thinking, is somebody messing with me? Is somebody mm -hmm. like playing a game with me? I, I didn't know what was going on. But yeah. for me to have this reaction to this black garbage bag was like, I knew something was going on. Everything else that was happening with me and all this anxiety, this being, not being able to sleep and these nightmares when I did and all these things, having to run out of my house because... I'd feel claustrophobic, even in my own 2,200 square foot home. I literally wow. would have to run outside my house because I felt like it, everything was just caving in. Oh my God. I can't so even after, imagine. I mean, I have tears in my eyes and I just, yeah. I can't even imagine what it's like a to be over there in a war zone and fighting and constantly not safe. And then also to have your wife ask for a divorce and then come home to an empty house. I mean, you know, no wonder it felt like everything was caving in, right? It, it was. Yeah. And so for me, I, I eventually had to real, uh, I realized that I needed help yeah. and I, I did, I went to the VA, the veterans administration to get some help. And the unfortunate thing is, is, and I understand in some aspects why they do this, but they immediately wanted to put me on medication. Mm -hmm. for me, I didn't, I just didn't want to go that route. And I wanted to try different things. And of course, after a, a period of time, I wasn't improving. I was starting to see a therapist and get some help. And I gave in to, to starting to take medication. But mm -hmm. as I was concerned, I did end up getting these negative side effects. And, and the, the unfortunate thing is, is you get on one medication to take care of another or to take right. care of one thing. And then you need another medication to take care of the side effects from that thing. And then yep. before you know it, you're on multiple medications and I immediately took myself off for those, which was the wrong thing to do because these types of medications, you have to wean yourself off right. of them. 
And so, um, so for me, it wasn't uh, the best thing, but I, uh, so anyhow, long story short, it, it was something I knew I continued to get help from, but after many years, it was like six years of, of talk therapy, trying to, I'd go get some help. And then part of me was like, okay, let me go on my own and, 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 you know, and, and take care of myself. And, but eventually, uh, I, I, I'd start having issues again and and just anxiety and depression. So I go back. And so I did that pretty much for six years off and on. Wow. And for me, I had always been very interested um, in the brain and in the human brain. And so some very fascinated with it. Yeah. Well, I came across um, Dr. Daniel Amen, who conducts these spec scans uh, for the brain. And basically what it does is it measures the cerebral blood flow and it can detect what areas of your brain are very active. Mm. So for me, I, I, I just, you know, I had the opportunity to get this done and it was more of kind of curiosity. It was like, these were going to be pictures of my own brain, how it's working and really kind of get a baseline of, of what's going on. And I was still struggling with anxiety and depression during this time. And, and I went and I had these scans, t- uh, scans done of my brain. Wow. Um, and I can't tell you how incredible it was to get these scans. They do one at rest and then one during concentration. And then you get this whole write up as far as what's going on. And and I remember the doctor. Yeah. I remember the doctor uh, calling me in and he had me sit on this couch and right before me was this table. And there on the top of the table were my scans. Like there was those, that was me. That was my brain. And he began to explain that I had these very active areas of my brain. And there he had these circles, these white circles. And he said like, there's your indication of like your PTSD and there's your obsessive compulsive and there's your hyper, um, hyper vigilant. And, and to me it was like, it was like, I finally let my, like I exhaled. And it was this huge relief mm. that because for several years, I, I, I'm very much into personal development. I'm pretty much into mental performance. I'm, I'm very much into these things. And all the things that I tried just weren't giving me the relief. And there before me, and, and going back a little bit, that made me feel bad because right. I'm like, I was trying to do all these things to improve my life and nothing was really giving me that true relief. Yeah. And so there before me was the answer there before me was like, Anthony, there's nothing wrong with you morally. You're not a bad person. Mm, Like this is actually happening. This is the map of what's happening in your brain chemically and biologically. And so therefore you could let yourself off the hook. It sounds like in a certain way. Yeah. As far as like being able to, you know, explain what has been going on and to know that, that it's been this, my brain that has kept me from really being able to focus um, and having these active areas that didn't allow my mind to shut down. Yeah. You know? And so for me, it was like, wow. And that's really kind of the foundation of my coaching practice. I don't necessarily encourage everyone to get a brain scan, (laughs) but uh, if someone has been struggling with anxiety and mild depression and these sorts of things and or or have might maybe have had you know some some hard times and in, in, or how, a struggle in improving their life um, it is a, a very uh, it is a route that I would encourage if somebody is able to do it financially to, to do it um, and because- so okay so I mean you've been through probably I would say right some of the most difficult situations anyone could face in their life and um, you know, that was then, that was how many years ago, eight years ago or so? Yes, 2010, I returned back from my department. And now you're where you are. And, yes. <laughs> um, you know, how, how do you walk a man through, like you said, maybe the first step is to get brain scans or maybe mm-hmm. not, but mm-hmm. how do you walk him from that place of his own struggle and challenge into, it might not look like your, you know, adventurous yes. life, but his yes. own sense of vitality and power and you know joy fulfillment adventure Mm. how do you get someone there yeah it goes back to that word again that redefining right Mm. i think no matter how small the flame is inside of a man he desires to be great Mm. you know deep inside he has the desire to be 
the best that he can, no matter how small that flame might be. And oftentimes we, we just need to hear that, that message that you can be great, that you can, that you have this potential that is deep within you. If I can go back uh, just a tiny bit to explain kind of maybe this little part here where I remember I had this job where I was delivering medical equipment. And this time I would have, during this time, I would have to carry a, a pager. This was back in the day. And, and I'd get a message. I got, if I got a message, uh, I obviously would have to answer it. And for one week, um, uh, I, I could be called up at any time during that whole week. Even if I just finished off my shift, I'd have to uh, answer that. And even if it just, if I got an answer or um, call at four o'clock in the morning and finished at seven and work started at eight, I would have to do that for a whole week. Yeah. Well, one day I get this, this message and I have to go and deliver a hospital bed and this oxygen. And I'm in Bend, Oregon. It's the middle of winter. And the it's snow and ice outside and it's 2 30 in the morning mm. and I get dressed I'm walking to this to my truck you know stepping on this uh stepping on this ice and this snow and I get to my door I put in my key and I have to dislodge my door to get to get it open I get into the truck and there it's just like jumping into an ice box right mm. and I, it's, it's this diesel truck so I have to wait for the bulb to go off and start it up and I, I wake, I, 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 it's such a loud noise, you wake half of the neighborhood up just from that, right? <laughs> and there, as the truck was warming up, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, Anthony, this is not what you were meant to do with your life. Uh, uh -huh. This is not, and it's like, I know, and I think for many men, and it's like for my clients too, where they, they can relate to that, like one day they just, they're on their way That's to work. It. That's, you know, yeah. And, and it's like, uh, this was not what I was meant to do with my life. And it's like, I want to be a, a better husband. I want to be a better father. I want to be more engaged. And it's just like, this is keeping me, this is just sapping me of my energy. Yeah. And that's For sure. What, right. So many men and women too have those yes. moments. Yes. And then what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What happened for you after that moment? That's where kind of things started changing, even though for me, I wanted to redefine my life and it didn't happen overnight. This was actually before my deployment. So after my deployment or when I was like, man, Anthony, you, you know, this stuff you're, you're, you, I was into this personal development stuff. I was into meditation and visualization and subconscious mind. I was all into this stuff, but I wasn't like coming back home and dealing with PTSD and anxiety and depression. This was something totally new for me. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was keeping me down. And, and for me in the back of my head, I'm like, it, it, I was struggling. I was struggling in every area of my life, struggling in, in, in my relationships, struggling in just who I was as a person, as a man. And so I had to redefine my life. And that is where um, I decided uh, it, it came to a point in my life where I said, I'm going to write down the kind of person that I want to be. The mm, man that I was I wondering be. that, right? Like what you did to actually redefine. So you started with writing yeah. down, this is who I want to be. This is the kind of person I am. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then now here's the, where the traveling comes in. Then I started traveling because there was two things I had always wanted to do. I wanted to travel and I wanted to finish my uh, college degree. Mm. It wasn't like something I felt like my college degree was going to be kind of the, what I needed for success, mm -hmm. but it was, it was a, it was a goal that I had for a very long time. So in fact, during my initial, the first initial years after my deployment and not wanting to be around a lot of people, I isolated myself. Mm -hmm. I ended up, I started taking online classes and one of the first classes that I took was a health and wellness class. Uh -huh. And it was this class that just opened up my world to health and wellness because oftentimes men focus more on their strength and their fitness, yeah. but there's so much more to health than just strength training. And don't get me wrong. I'm very much into strength training. I love strength training myself, but there's just so much more to it. Well, right. And I want to just go back for a moment to say that as you wrote down what kind of person you wanted to be or what was most important to you, it sounds like two of your most important things were your degree mm -hmm. and travel. 
Yes. And just, you know, for men listening, right, it's going to be different. It's going to oh, be absolutely. unique to who you are. And um, yeah, I just wanted to make that part clear. Yeah, absolutely. So long story short, I ended up uh, eventually transferring over to uh, um, a university, uh, uh, offline university, uh, Oregon State University, in fact, and that's where I finished my bachelor's degree in health promotion and health behavior. And then I actually continued on for my master's degree in public health. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up going into the public health profession. And this is where a light bulb mo moment went off for me as far as like men's health and, and coaching men where through my struggles, my mental well-being struggles, and even during my undergraduate and graduate degree, and then going into the public health field, I saw that there was this huge lack of men's health initiatives. Mm -hmm. There was like nothing really other than your, you know, like I mentioned before, your strength training, your building muscles for men, but there was just so much more that. And so what I did is I ended up conducting a men's health workshop hmm. and, and that was part of my, my job. I was a health educator and I conducted this men's health workshop during men's health month, mm -hmm. is June, um, which happens in June. And the feedback I got from the men were just overwhelming in praise and they just wish they had heard this information long ago. What was the um, information that you shared with them or that you were gathering from them? Really just this, um, what I had really, uh, that information outside of there's health, there's more to health than just strength training. Mm -hmm. There's your environment and how your environment impacts your health. And that in includes um, where you live and, and, and the things that you expose yourself to. There's also your social health, your friendships, those other people who you connect with, those mm -hmm. that, so your environment, your social health, your, your, I'm sorry, your environment, your social, then there's also your behavior and those lifestyle choices that, and then also chronic diseases where majority of the chronic diseases that we're seeing people suffer from today, especially men, they're all preventable. Hmm. And it's only as a result of these lifestyle choices that we make that just because somebody has a predisposition or the genetic to develop diabetes or yeah. obesity, these things are all preventable. Wow. And oftentimes people think, well, my family has it. Someone in my family has it. I'm going to get it. And that's not true. There are so many things that we could do with, about these preventable chronic diseases. And so that's what I was sharing with these men. And they're like, just overwhelmed and praised. And that's where just a light bulb moment went off. I go, wait a second, here's my life and my struggles and the things that I, you know, that I was struggling with. Here was this education, this solid education that I got out of health and, and wellness. And then I go into the public health field and I just see this huge lack of the, of the story of the narratives that men are told that are yeah. given that is, there's so much more to it. And so for me and helping men individually where they begin to redefine their life, but I also make it to where it, there's a, this importance of brain health. Mm -hmm. and I believe this is where, you know, kind of your self-help gurus, your authors, your speakers uh, really miss the point because when you're trying to change your life, when you're redefining your life, we don't talk about brain health. And that's the very thing that's going to help you to have real lasting change. Mm. Wow. Interesting. I mean, right. Brain health is not a term that you hear. I mean, <laughs> no. I don't hear very often. Yes. No. Um, and, and can you define that or what do you mean in a way by brain health or how, how do you make your brain healthy? Those are great questions. And the thing is, oftentimes when we think of health, what do we think about? We think about exercising and eating and doing these sorts of things, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, we think of that as a, just, it benefits our bodies just right. from, like, from our, from our neck down. Yeah. But in truth, reality, everything that we eat and drink impacts our brain. Either it helps it or it doesn't. Well, and right. So, and I think about, you know, there's psychological health and emotional health yes. and does brain health encompass all of that? Absolutely. So when you're thinking of your mental health, there's oftentimes 
Um, and so the foods that we eat and the, the, the things that we drink and even smoke impact the functioning of our brain. Mm. So when we think about not only are we eating for our body, we're also eating for our brain. Right. And the thing is, our brain is the very, and we often don't even take in consideration our brain because it's the very organ that is utilized to make the decisions that we make on a daily basis. Right. And, and it's the daily decisions that we make that ultimately create our life. Right. Shape our lives and yeah. what we do and who we're with and right. All of that, how we spend our Absolutely. time. Absolutely. So oftentimes with my clients where they are suffering from anxiety and mild depression. And when I get deeper into their life and deeper into what's going on, they're not sleeping well. Yeah. They're not eating well. They're not physically active. And once that this, once those things begin to change, their anxiety and their depression diminishes and they, they're more energetic. They're more focused on what it is that they want. They're not distracted. They're focused. Mm. And they begin to redefine their life. They know exactly what it is they want. They eliminate the distractions, which helps in eliminating anxiety. And they begin to work towards that, that they desire the most. Wow. Whether that's being a more engaged father, whether that's being a more engaged husband, a supportive husband, whatever, like you mentioned, it's individual. For me, it was all about living my adventurous spirit. Mm -hmm. For me, that is what I wanted to do more than anything. And that's what I have been able to create for my life. But for many other men, they, they don't think adventure. They're like, I just want to stay home. <laughs> you know? Right. I, I want to be engaged in my life as it is. Yes. I want life to yeah. be. Yeah. You know, I don't want to be half-assed here or you know, <laughs> disconnected, like you said, from my partner, from my children, or, yes. or I want to do work that I love so I actually can spend my days feeling inspired again, yeah. right? Yeah, and oftentimes, some of this anxiety and depression comes from that feeling of being trapped, yeah. where they, they, they don't have those options and those decisions. Well, okay. Can you, can you go, let's go there for a minute because I think a, a feeling of being trapped, I mean, there mm -hmm. are of course ways that we can be trapped or um, stuck financially mm -hmm. or situationally, right? Like I, it doesn't seem as easy for me to pick up and leave having a six year old mm -hmm. as it would for you just to be yes. on your own. But yes. I th also think there's a kind of um, a mental attitude of mm -hmm. trapped and yes. to redefine your life or to see beyond the box or the conventions that are painted for us, mm. you know, goes a long way. So I'm curious how you work with men who feel trapped. Yes. And it, 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 this is a great time because I was uh, working with a client who he's actually a veteran and he uh, thought that he, he ended up buying this property and it was a beautiful, I've been to it, it's a beautiful property. And the last time he, uh, for him, he felt like this was going to be where he, this was something very big for him. He loved it. It was right by a river. He could go fishing, go swimming, do all these different things. And it had been a while since I had connect, or uh, had finished um, working with him. And then he contacted me and began to explain this new situation to me where he felt trapped. And what happened was his mother-in-law moved in with him. Oh, well, that, and, that could have been trapped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and so for him, he was, this created a lot of anxiety this created a, you know he's basically losing his house now right because now he has to do this and this is this is a situation that a lot of couples find themselves right in. and so this can now um create this kind of anxiety for him and create like he had plans and he has goals now these things are stopping him mm -hmm. and so one of the things that i shared with him and let me back up he does want to live out his adventurous spirit he's like man i want to be able to do these things and really what it came down to is having that heart to heart conversation with his wife mm. where he, it's not that he doesn't love his wife. Yeah. It's not that he doesn't want to care for his mother-in-law. Doesn't It's not that he doesn't want to be there, but he had to take that, that he had to make that effort to have that one-on-one -on -one 
conversation with his wife to let her know exactly what was going on and to involve her in, 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 in what he desired to do. And that was to go on some, uh, if I remember correctly, like a week long adventure uh-huh. or to go hiking. And it's like, look, go, you know, have this heart to heart conversation with your wife and let her know how important it is to you. And it's not about saying, Hey, I'm going to go and do this. And this is when I'm going. It's about, Hey, this is something that's important for me. How do we can work we, this out together? Yeah, it, exactly. Yeah. How can we, yes. It's not that I don't want to be here for you. It's not that I want to leave you here with your, 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 uh, your mother, but this is something that's really important for me. And this is, this is actually a very good point because oftentimes men just push their, their, their needs to the side and then they end up getting frustrated and annoyed and just disengaged. Right. Disengage. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, as a woman, I can say that's one of the worst things for, mm. for I'll just speak for myself to feel mm-hmm. is when a man or person, right. is just disengaged, disconnected, not bringing his, his heart anymore to me. Um, and, and I just love that, you know, I, I wasn't sure where you were going with it, but mm-hmm. the answer isn't always obvious, right? The answer isn't necessarily, God, I've got to get this mother-in-law out of mm-hmm. my house mm-hmm. for him. Maybe it was, oh, I actually need to leave more. Or maybe for someone mm-hmm. else, it would have been, let's move the mother-in-law down the road mm-hmm. or something, but just mm-hmm. that you can't know until you actually have that conversation. And I love the, um, you know, if I wasn't, if I didn't feel trapped or what, what would it look like to not feel trapped? And then how mm-hmm. do I involve the other people in my life yes. in this decision? Yes. Cause in, in all reality, you know, the thing is, is, is yes, hopefully she is a, a supportive and understanding uh, person and kind of be like, yes, it's not that you want to leave. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. it's like, this is really something. And the important thing, and you bring this up too, where is that when a man is fulfilled, when he is doing something that he is passionate about, that he loves, he's going to be that much better of a husband, yes. of a father, of a man, because he's not denying that adventure side of him or denying that, 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 that piece that's him. You're yes. not going to change. You're not going to change that from him. Like whoever I end up with, <laughs> you know, hopefully, so, you know, th- this is who I am. Yes. Uh, this well, is and not going to change. Great. I think <laughs> yeah. this is where your work and my work overlap too, because I often work with, you know, men to figure out, okay, how do I have this conversation? That's not mm-hmm. a fuck you. It's not yes. a, I'm leaving if this doesn't happen. Right. I mean, there are going to be times when people will separate or leave, mm-hmm. but first, how do we actually check in and say, Hey, this is what I'm wanting. This is what's important to me. And I also want to know what's important to you and let's Absolutely. have a conversation. So we can both be Absolutely. our most alive and fulfilled selves. And, and, you know, hopefully we could stay together and do this. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you bring up a good point. And I think it's, it's, and the thing is it's same, it's, it's the same for both people involved in the relationship, right? Especially yep. you know, for husbands and wanting their wives to go out and, Whatever is going to rejuvenate her, because I guarantee you, when she's rejuvenated or when he's rejuvenated, everything else is going to be, you know, is just going to be another level, whether it's that sexual part of them, whether it's just that togetherness of them. It's going to be incredible. Oftentimes, they're just reluctant to 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 involve that other person, or that. And there, there's times where the, there isn't the support, and you and you kind of have to work with it, and that's just part yeah. of being in a relationship. But when, when that person is fulfilled, and I've seen it time and again, where a man is now, hey, he goes on a motorcycle camp for a week, right? That's, mm-hmm. that, that was his adventure, go mm-hmm. for hiking for a week. He comes back and it's like, he's engaged, you know? And, and, and the truth of the matter is, I think when we, when we talk about kids, kids need to see their parents happy. They yeah. need to see them accomplishing their goals. And it's not like because dad's going to be gone for a week that he's, you know, not being... Um, uh, supportive or, or being, uh, you know, taking care of his responsibilities. That's not what this is all about. It's just about taking care of that person inside because they're going to then be a much better or, or, or an engaged husband, yes. father, and man. Yes. Well, thank you. I mean, this is amazing. I feel really excited. I think in part because, um, 
you know, you're a living example, right? Of someone who can go from the depth of mm. the painful experiences of anxiety, of depression, and actually find your way into what is most fulfilling for you. You know, what, what is a reason worth living? And like we said, for every man, it's different, but, um, but that living without that to me doesn't feel like an option in my life anymore. And, you know, for Mm -hmm. you clearly hasn't, isn't an option anymore either. So I love, I love supporting men with this and, um, you know, mm-hmm. we could go on for a long time, but I'm thinking for now, <laughs> right? If yes. there was something you were to leave a man with who's sitting here thinking, oh yeah, you know, I, I am struggling or life doesn't feel as exciting anymore or I'm just, I just don't have it anymore, right? Mm. What, what would you say to him? Yeah, that's or a great even, question. actually, sorry, I just want to add, even a man who is doing really well and things are going mm. well, but also has that sense of, Oh, there's something more. There's something. Mm-hmm. There's something else. Mm-hmm. You know, one thing I share is, and I know, and for some reason, this is difficult for men. But I often tell them, "What is it that you want?" Mm-hmm. And to and for to be as specific as possible. You know, whether somebody is right now listening to this. And I'm just going to picture somebody who's driving, uh, driving a delivery truck like I did at one time, right? Mm-hmm. And and, it's, and he just knows, hey, this isn't for me. It's all about creating uh, or writing down what it is that you want, and begin to create the plan on how to make it. Whether that's decreasing your debt, whether that's you know planning with somebody or whatever. But I think more than anything, and I know maybe perhaps this is why, I'm, at least for myself and perhaps yourself, is getting the coach because once you have that accountability, once you have that, I sort of that other um, viewpoint of showing men how they, how they you can do this. Yeah. And here are those steps. Yeah. And oftentimes we try to do it on our own man as men. We, we, we want to do it on our own. Yes. Right? We, want to, we, <laughs> we want to claim that success. It's like, I wrote that book and I'm the one only one who did it. And it's like, but, if you realize anyone who's successful doesn't do it on their own, mm-hmm. there are editors, there are people who there's so many different um, jobs in, in a sense, it's like, I don't do everything on my own. I'm successful, but I have, a, I delegate other things to people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm able to do the, have the lifestyle I have because I do delegate. But going back to your question is that first it, it takes the belief also, you know, and, and it can be a struggle but it's, it's really defining. Once you know what it is that you want, things begin to happen. Mm. Yeah. Once you know exactly what it is you want, things begin to happen. And you don't, and the thing is too, is you don't have to know how it's going to happen. You don't, right. know how, you don't have I, to know the how. Yeah. That's the what that comes first. Right. And this isn't a, you know, again, this isn't an airy fairy, oh, it's just going to happen. But no, also no. what you're saying is, right, start no. to make a plan, start to take one step and see who you meet along the way and who supports you and, you know, which Absolutely. thing leads you to something else, right? Absolutely. Take, yeah. it's just one thing. And no matter where you're at, whether you're, you're wanting more success in your life or you already have success in your life, there are different things. Once you know what it is you want and you start there are people that can that, Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And where can men find more of you? Yes, men can find me at strongmencoaching.com. That's awesome. strong, M E N, coaching.com. Awesome. Thank you so much for being with us today and for being a living example, like I said, of a man who has taken the intensity and the grit of life and actually you know, turned your life into something that is exciting and adventurous and, and really deeply meaningful for you. Thank you very much. I'm so glad you joined us for today's episode of Man Alive. I hope you enjoyed our conversation and it gave you something to consider and explore in your life. If you like what you heard, I'd be so grateful for you to subscribe and write a quick review that helps men like you find us. And again, head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz or text the word ALIVE, A-L-I-V-E, to 44144 to get a sense of how you can become a better lover and leader. You'll start to see how you can be both more respected and desired in your unique and genuine way. 
if you don't feel as confident or as excited about life or love as you'd like to be, this quiz is a really great starting point and will guide you toward a more passionate love life and a more inspiring and successful career. So again, text ALIVE, A-L-I-V-E, to 44144 or head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz. Join us each week for a new episode of Man Alive.